She is the last hope of good in the war against the evil sorceress known as the Lady. From a secret base on the Plains of Fear, where even the Lady hesitates to go, Black Company, once in service to the Lady, now fights to bring victory to the White Rose. But now an even greater evil threatens the world. All the great battles that have gone before will seem as skirmishes when the Dominator rises from the grave. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Himbar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler for review of Glenn Cook's The White Rose. White Rose is a 1985 novel by Glenn Cook, and it is the sequel to Shadows Linger, which itself is the sequel to The Black Company. Now, this is the final book in the first Chronicles of the Black Company, often called The Book of the North. Now, there are several other books that take place after this, but this is a sequence that is concluded here. And I have done reviews for those first two books. This will contain spoilers for those, so if you haven't read those books and don't want to be spoiled on some things, then I would go either watch my review for The Black Company or go and read it, which is something I will recommend. Now, this story, of course, takes place after Shadows Linger. It does take place a few years after those events, actually. It starts out with uh, us going to the Plain of Fear, which is now the home of The Black Company, and their resistance against the lady. It seems like a rather f failing endeavor. Um, it's a pretty interesting plane, but it basically seems like the last readout against the forces of the lady. Now, it doesn't bore us with giving us a bunch of nothing that happens in the interview intervening years, but we do get some other characters actually besides Croker. We get Corby, who's in the city of Vero, and, uh, well, this is... Uh, kind of interesting stuff going on. It actually interacts with another character we have, Bowmans, who is, well, if you remember, he is, here he's actually seen as more of an archaeologist um, and a historian of sorts. He also kind of seems more like a grave digger, but he's actually a character important to the rise of the lady, as if you recognize the name, it is this part of Bowman's actually said about a century before the rest of the story. So we have two timelines going, which is pretty interesting. He's actually the wizard who releases the lady, and we kind of get an idea of how that happens. Now, the other characters um, come together very nicely, actually. There's definitely some surprises in here for fans of the series, and this is just as good, kind of, as the first two books. Uh, in fact, I thought it was just a nice conclusion, so in my mind it was kind of better in a way. Uh, we get, again, aged and aging soldiers, even civilians, um, Cook does a fantastic job with relationships. Now, it is definitely dreary, definitely set in a dreary world, and isn't always the prettiest picture he's giving us, but is definitely worth reading, honestly. This should, these are just good books, and maybe I'm so surprised because I wasn't expecting really anything going in here. As far as the Black Company goes, we now have Elmo in charge since the captain's death at End of Book 2, which... I thought it was really s sad, but also extremely funny, which, of course, I couldn't talk about that <laughs> in my spoiler-free review of Shadows Linger, but I will say that's what my thoughts were on that. Uh, I think the story here, again, is awesome. It's very entertaining with the banter, the humor, and even the dark bits, though, of course. We do have a lot more, I feel like, um, magical things going on, or at least fantastical creatures, like the men here, the old father tree, which you can see on the cover of the bind-up versions, as well as the original um, White Rose cover. We also get flying mantas, we get undead, we get the Taken again, of course, and we have essentially Hurons from, uh, you know, Tolkien's mythos, that's essentially what they are. And then again, Croker is always the highlight. He's, of course, the narrator for, well, he really is just the narrator, I guess the other parts are his recordings, right? So, and we get, again, more of the lady's weird interest in him, gets him in trouble, um, may make it easier for him what would other be otherwise be dire straits, uh, which I won't spoil you on that, but very interesting stuff going on. Again, kind of about like how, uh, well, some things, the sides are not black and white and kind of like how we've already had in the first couple books, uh, there's some bleed over from those different sides as well. And this kind of has to deal with the fact that of course, these are characters, I and mean, these are really good characters as well, because these are characters that have personal interests, right? And so that's kind of why 
this is happening but there's also always the idea that there seems to always be a bigger evil which even happens here in the final book essentially right though it's not really the final book as well um i think the depth of the world is presented quite exceptionally well uh, or it does remind me a lot of malazan uh, with how it's handled actually uh, i think the subversion of expectations uh again of the side versus side thing is a nice touch and there's a great sense of anticipation that's handled really well here now there are more stories to be held after this i'm trying to remember um raf blue tox was uh telling me which one you could read two i think i think there's two options that you can read after this one and some prefer one book over the other but i'll see which one i go with i can't even remember what they're called right now so um yeah, but anyways, I did really enjoy this one. I'll just leave my thoughts really at that. Um, but if you haven't read The Black Company or are still reading this or whatever, I would go and read The Black Company. You can find this bind up pretty easily. This has been Liam Williams Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.